All right, let's talk about how we control coagulation. First, a little bit more about what happens after a clot forms. <clears throat> so once you have formed a clot, you've coagulated, you've got that fiber and mesh work that has trapped platelets and red blood cells. Um, you've got the platelets there from the platelet plug. And uh, platelets, interestingly, they have actin and myosin in them, just like your skeletal muscle fibers. And so they can actually contract. And they do that within about 30 to 60 minutes after coagulation. And that actually pulls on the fibrin proteins, that fibrin meshwork, and it squeezes the clot. So it actually makes the clot contract and that squeezes out the fluid, which now is called serum. So serum is plasma minus your procoagulants. That's called serum. So the liquid portion of unclotted blood is plasma, but after blood clots, the the fluid has lost most of the procoagulants because they've been used up in making that clot take place. And so now the liquid is referred to as serum. So you may hear that uh, in the laboratory, we're gonna run tests on serum. So a lot of times before, if they're looking for things like hormones in uh, the blood fluids, yeah, they collect blood from a patient and the blood may have clotted. The hormones are still suspended in the, the fluid of the blood, but it's now called serum because the uh, once the cells have been taken out and and they've been allowed to clot form clots okay that uh, platelet the contraction of the platelets actually also helps bring ruptured blood vessels together and uh, now the clot is not permanent that is just a temporary seal until the blood vessel walls themselves can be repaired so there are some growth factors that wind up being released from this injured area and um, one of those is called PDGF, that stands for a platelet-derived growth factor. VEGF is a growth factor for your vascular endothelium. That's what the VE stands for. And so those are signals which stimulate regrowth and repair. So you need your smooth muscle tissues to regenerate in your blood vessel walls. You need your connective tissues within the walls of the blood vessels to repair. And then finally, you need that endothelial lining to repair as well. That's where that VEGF plays a major role. Growth factors stimulate cells to divide and to produce the substances that are going to reproduce the tissues where they're located. Okay, so once your blood vessel walls have repaired themselves, and it doesn't take all that long, um, you need to get rid of these clots that are present. And... Uh, so this actually begins within uh, about two days, but the whole dissolving of the clot process may take several days to take place. All right, so how this happens, there is yet another one of these inactive proteins that we have present in our blood all the time, and this one is called plasminogen. And, um, you know, after a clot has been around for a couple of days and you're ready to dissolve it, this plasminogen becomes activated and gets converted into plasmin. So whenever you see this ogen suffix, that's usually referring to an inactive protein of some type in your blood and gets clipped off and now you have the active form. So plasmin is active. All right, so what does this? What takes plasminogen and converts it into plasmin? So you have an enzyme called tissue plasminogen activator or TPA that uh, does that process. Okay, once you have this plasmin around, plasmin breaks apart the fibrin meshwork. It's a fibrin digesting enzyme. Incidentally, TPA is a substance that can artificially be given to patients who are in the early stages of suffering from a stroke or a heart attack because those are caused by unwanted blood clots that have formed in inside blood vessels that supply the brain um, or the wall of the heart in the case of a heart attack. So sometimes if you can infuse these patients with this TPA uh, quickly enough, it can help break down those clots before they cause um, 
damage injury that's irreversible. All right, so obviously we don't want, clotting is a very powerful uh, aspect of our hemostasis, or our homeostasis survival, um, but we don't want this happening undesirably. Sometimes it does anyway, but we don't want that to happen. So what prevents it? Well, first of all, platelet plug, you know, you got to go through the vascular spasm, then platelet plug formation, then you create the blood clot. So if you prevent platelets, from forming a platelet plug, that's going to prevent blood coagulation. All right, so platelet plug formation or platelet adhesion is prevented by the smooth endothelium that lines your blood vessels. All right, so here's an artery, here's a vein, and we'll be talking about those in more detail on unit three, but here's the inner lining, you know, one cell thick, that's the endothelium. So as long as that surface is nice and smooth, you don't have rips and tears in it that would be exposing you know, the connective tissues that are deeper in the wall over here, um, the platelets are not going to stick. Also, the endothelial cells, they naturally secrete substances that prevent platelets from uh, sticking. It's also been discovered that vitamin E quinone, that's a chemical that's derived from vitamin E, um, helps prevent unwanted coagulation as well. You may have heard of uh, people who have trouble with heart disease, which is caused when you have blood clots that form in the small arteries in the walls of your heart and cut off the blood supply to parts of the walls of the heart. Sometimes people take vitamin E to try to help prevent those types of blood clots from forming and reduces the chance that they might have a heart attack. All right, so if you have a smooth endothelium, that's uh, one of the main things that will help limit unwanted blood clots from forming. Incidentally, you know, as you get older and you do become more at risk for heart disease, that is due to unwanted blockages and clots that can develop in blood vessels uh, that serve the walls of the heart or strokes are caused by unwanted blood clots that cut off the blood supply to portions of the brain. And um, so a lot of times that's triggered by that endothelium on the insides of your blood vessels not staying nice and smooth. And one of the things that makes it not so smooth is the accumulation of fatty type substances, um, which is largely due to the diets that we eat. So as you get older, you get more of those types of deposits in the walls of your artery, arteries, and it makes it more likely that platelets are going to stick and set off that blood coagulation process in unwanted locations inside your blood vessels where they can then cut off the blood supply to uh, vital organs. All right, so lecture 14, you've probably heard about bleeders before, people who have bleeding disorders, and we'll talk about some of those in uh, lecture 14.